Let's take a look at Unit 5 in Code HS, the Advanced HTML and CSS. This is Lesson 14, Image Manipulation. So we will jump in. Um, again, the video leads things off. Um, hopefully, if you were able to watch that, you found it useful. Then we have the quiz. Um, so I don't typically require the quizzes because we've had issues. Um, so, all right, um, here we get into an example, okay? And again, with these, we want to see exactly how things are laid out in HTML, but also in our style. So we have the original image that's just a basic IMG tag, and then the link. Here we have the addition of adding a class called grayscale. So let's go into our CSS. All right, and they're doing a sub tag. You technically don't have to do that the way they're using it, but um, I suppose it is good practice. Um, but so that's kind of a nested, um, if you have an image and you apply grayscale, it will filter the image. Okay. Um, all right, then we kind of see the same thing. This class is called blur, but again, we create a class. The common theme we want to see here is filter colon. So our attributes filter, then our um, what we're going to set it as. So we just saw grayscale. We've got blur. Notice grayscale is a percentage. Blur is based on pixels, and you can play around with it. So you know the more pixels you do, the more blurred it is. The fewer pixels you do, the less blurred it is. So just kind of play around with that. And then I could have done the same thing with the grayscale percentage. Uh, for this one, we see the hue, saturation, and rotation. I think I already had been playing around with this one. Um, I think it started out at 90, if memory serves correctly. But um, obviously, if we go 180, that's pretty much going to be the opposite for our images. Um, if we go all the way to 360, just what's going to happen? Well, it's a complete circle. All right, they're exactly the same. So you've got from zero to 360 to have varying um, changes in the hue, but again, it's a filter, hue, rotate. All right, so we get into our first assignment. This says you'll create your own invert filter. Each color in the image will be inverted to its opposing color in the RGB spectrum. Keep the original image the same but style the inverted image such that it has an invert filter of 100%. So what we want to make sure we do with our HTML file, if it's not already there, all right, we're going to have the exact same image. All right, um, we're going to just add the class invert inside the image tag, but we're linking to the exact same image and in our CSS file, all right, I just did a dot invert. You could do img dot invert or just dot, in, that's the class name. We're gonna do filter and we're gonna set it to invert 100%. We go to our output. All right, and you can see the inverted image there. Okay, so again, you could do dot invert or img dot invert. So if I refresh, it's gonna do the same thing. Okay, um, and then just double check in your HTML file that you have applied the invert class, okay? inside the inverted image. All right, and then again, the image link is exactly the same as the original image. All right. All right, next, uh, you're building a website for a photographer. She wants a page that shows how well her process works for fixing blurred photos. The problem is she only has the after photo that has been fixed. The original before blurred photo has been lost. Your job, create a web page that showcases the before picture and the after picture. Label the pictures before and after using H1 tags. Okay. Reconstruct the blurred photo by adding a blur filter to the before picture. Blur the photo by four pixels. Create a CSS rule for the class blurred and use it to style the before picture. Make the images 200 tall, 300 wide and it gives us a link to the picture to use. So that's the link we can use. So again, we're linked to our style sheet right here. So let's make sure we remember that's important. Um, so we have our title, a link, REL style sheet, type, text CSS, the href style.css. All right, in our body, we have the before inside of H1 tag. 
Then we have an image tag. We apply the class blurred. Then we link to the image with a source tag, SRC. All right, don't forget to uh, put the closing uh, greater than sign there to close that image tag, which is, again, an empty element. And then we have another H1 tag for after, and then we just have a link to the image. Okay, in CSS, all right, we do img.blurred. Again, filter. All right, this time it's going to be a blur property with a value of four pixels. Okay, so this it should be, and then we can also um, make sure that for the image in our CSS, so all images before and after get a width of 300 pixels and a height of 200 pixels. All right, and then when we, again, we run it, we see our before, we see our after, and we check, we should have a green checkbox. Okay, this next one, uh, index has a table that contains the same image. Each image has a different class. You will create the CSS rules for each of these classes. Each image should have a height of 150 pixels. Each image should also have a hue rotation filter as specified by the class name. For instance, hue 45 should have a hue rotation filter rotated by 45 degrees. So we kind of need to see our table. So we've got angle of rotation, 45, 90. So we're basically doing it every 45 degrees from 45 to 225. So where that's going to come into play, we're going to have our image CSS rule. They're all going to have a height of 150, so we can do that there. Okay, and then we're just going to create a class for each rotation that is dot hue and then a dash in the amount of rotation. So dot hue 45 dot hue 90, dot hue 135, dot hue 180, and so on. And each one we have the filter prop, uh, attribute, All right, we're using the hue rotate property, and then each one the difference is the degrees. So notice we have to signify deg four degrees. Um, so that just is kind of an extra step. Be careful, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five classes. And now we have to go to our table. Um, it says you don't have to modify this table, just create the CSS rules for the classes. So I uh, forgot that part. So obviously the, that kind of helped us name our classes. So we had the Hue 45, Hue 90. So if we did that CSS part correctly, we should see the output that we see here. All right, so we should be ready to submit and continue. And we are good to go. Okay, this one, okay, the image shown is overexposed, it's too bright. Make a rule for the class too bright that applies a brightness filter. Give it the parameter 0 0.8. Okay, so we go to style, a class too bright, filter, brightness 0 0.8. Okay, just following the directions there. And that is our one rule we're doing for this one. And we go back to the index and make sure it is applied to the image tag to bright. And we see our output and that will fix it to make it so that it's not quite as bright. Okay, this next one, create a grayscale work of art, find a colored image, that is licensed for modification. <clears throat> Excuse me, apply a grayscale filter to the image to create a new piece of art. Um, this is kind of a default one that is there. I got this one from CodeHS um, and it's still working. So if you want to copy that same image, it is HTP, HTTPS colon slash slash CodeHS.com slash images slash rows dash own dash piano dash okay and we give it the class grade g-r-e-y-e-d and then to style it we do a rule or a class all right you could just do the dot grade or img dot grade it'll work the same and we do a filter grayscale and i set it to a hundred percent um you could play around with it if you i don't believe it has to be a hundred so if i change it to 90 
and good output. Uh, you can see it's got a little, little bit. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it added a little bit of color to it. If we want to go down to 80, we might see some of that red start to show up a little bit. So um, play around with it, uh, see what looks good to you, All right, and then you should be good to go. Okay, this is where it gets big and busy. Um, obviously, this was a monster task that carries on into the next couple of levels. Um, so I'm going to go over this. I'll share my code. Um, can I show you what to do and how to do it? Um, so this web page will eventually showcase six foods from around the world revealed when you hover over the platters. You're going to incrementally add to this website as you go through the next few lessons. The content of the web page is mostly already set up for you. So that means mostly what we're doing are be CSS rules. Um, your first task is to add image filters to the glasses underneath the web page header. Add a CSS rule for the even and a CSS rule for the odd classes for the tags that contain an image filter. Okay, I don't want to update right now. They have already been given even and odd classes, so that means it's already done for us in HTML. But feel free to change the classes, add more classes, or even give each class a unique ID. We're just going to leave it as it is. <clears throat> Other than optionally adding classes or IDs to the glass images, do not change the HTML file. Add CSS rules to apply filters to the glasses. You must use at least two different filters, hue rotation, blur, and vert. So it's giving you a little bit of leeway here. Okay, and then you will need to copy your HTML and CSS files into the next exercise. You may want to copy uh, and open in a new tab. Okay. So again, we want to do something with the even and odd classes so that they do something slightly different. So what we're talking about are these images that show up under Worldwide Food. You can see something's already been applied. So what I have is for the even filter, I did a hue rotate of 135. And then for the odd, I did a hue rotate of 300. You could obviously do something different, um, but that just kind of adds an uh, alternating color pattern, um, gives it a nice touch. Um, so um, you don't have to, you could do some invert, you could do some brightness, grayscale, it's up to you. Um, really, or you could even do hue rotate and do different, uh, different shades um, based on different degrees. So you could, you know, say you want to do um, a 180, and then you'll see, all right, that kind of changes that. Maybe you want to change that one to a 270. All right, we kind of got pink and purple there. So again, it's up to you, um, or maybe I want to go back and do a 90. So you'll, you'll see, uh, or just a 90. All right, so it, again, uh, have, have fun, play around with it. Um, but that is essentially it on this level. What you needed to do was just add the filter, hue rotate, and then the degrees. Um, and then it says before you continue, you may want to copy. Um, I've already got it copied over into the next one, so I'm going to go ahead and click Submit Continue. Okay, this next one, all right, in a future lesson, we're going to add an animation to make it seem like the platter is being lifted off to reveal the dish beneath. To prepare for that animation, we first need to change the background image. All right, copy your code from the last exercise, Worldwide Foods Part 1. Uh, so if you need to navigate back and forth down here, you can hover over. We're in part two. You can go back to part one. I would start with your index file. Just highlight, copy, come back over here. Make sure you paste in the HTML. And you can do the same thing for your CSS file. Just come back and forth. Um, so we got to do that first. All right. Then you'll need to give each of the div tags with class platter a unique ID. Okay, use the food names in the list of the image URLs below to identify each food, okay? For example, the first one might look like this, div class equals platter, ID equals fajita. So all of them will have the class of platter, but notice each one has a different ID, fajitas, hummus, mas so I just took the first word, so for masaman curry, I just did masaman. I also, to keep it simple, just did all lowercase. Um, so that is it's going to align with each image. And you could do it without previewing the output. As you can see, I've got the text here, fajita, so I know what to do that, OK? Um, so we want to set that up first. It says, then 
use the ID and the hover selector to change the background image when you hover over the platter with a mouse. Here are the URLs for each image. So this is the image we want to change it to. So it's all right there for us. So uh, we have given, we go into each one, we start with fajitas. It has a class of platter and an ID of fajitas that we'd have to enter. All right, then we would do class platter, ID hummus, and so on until we finished all of that up. Now, when we go into our CSS, remember with the ID, we do the hashtag. So we're gonna do hashtag fajitas, all right, hover. Okay, so that's what it means right there. So we're gonna do, ID, that's an ID. And then, so that means that each one is gonna have a unique background image. So we're gonna do background dash image. And then we do a colon, URL, we're gonna link. And inside parentheses and quotation marks, we just copy all right, the link that's right here. So again, you could right click, um, you can kind of open it if you want to in a new tab to see what it should look like. And then you can right click, um, copy image link. You could do it that way or you could just copy the, ink, the link directly. But sometimes if it pops open, that's okay. Um, so you can just, again, right click on the image. We wanna copy image link or um, I'm in on a MacBook. It may be a little bit different if you're on a PC, but um, this should be an image address or image link and we'll paste that as the URL. So we will do that for each item. So we have it for fajitas, for hummus. So notice hummus is using a different image. Hummus is using this image. The Massaman Curry, again, our idea is Massaman. We'll use this image, paella, the pho, and the pierogi. Okay, so each one has a unique URL, but each one will be a colon hover, so an action item to hover when the mouse is over it. That's what that colon hover means, it means when we're hovering over it um, actively. We then have a background image colon URL. Um, so if you wanted to set it up, you could just do the background image colon URL, have your parentheses, have your quotes, copy and paste that for each one, and then just go in and add those, whatever works best for you. But when we finish, you should have it so that you can hover over and you get a different image for each one. All right, and it is hopefully the appropriate image. Okay, and if you notice, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. Um, that is not a problem um, for this assignment. It just is what it is. So, all right, and each one does what it's supposed to. All right, so we click Submit and Continue. All green check boxes, we are good to go. All right, and that concludes Unit 5, Lesson 14.